Hi guys, welcome to We Are Tottenham TV. This is the instant match reaction after the Newcastle United 2 Tottenham Hotspur 1 Premier League game. Oh, I feel very, very frustrated and deflated and I'm getting a lot of abuse in the comments from people who are wondering how I'm going to find a positive way to spin that. However, what I would argue is, I actually think Tottenham Hotspur played well today. We did lose the game. We lost the game in a naive way in the second, with the second goal, which we will go into. But the way that the goals went in was uh, Newcastle went 1-0 up. First half, Harvey Barnes. We equalised from an own goal, from good work, from our substitute, Brennan Johnson, on the right, after a mistake from Nick Pope. And then, like I said, the naive winner from Isak, after we tried to play the high line, Dragosheen kept Murphy on and cut it across for an open goal for Isak. Uh, I'm here with Ash. <laughs> uh, you seem a little more uh, no, listen a little happier than no I no i'm not happy this is a painful laugh have you ever seen that meme when a guy's got the mask and he's smiling but yeah. underneath he's crying yeah. he's in pain that that is literally me right now i'm yeah. thinking you know when you go into a yoga studio and i'm like high line high line that's what i'm that's what i'm saying because that's how we were undone we were undone through a quick transition counter-attacking football and it was too easy for them to score that goal I felt after you lose that ball Madison gets turned we need to do a lot more in the transition that was the one thing and I said it we did look better when we brought on more attacking attempt yeah. but you run the risk of that recovery run and when those recovery runs aren't there you're open like sesame so you think what it was so basically for the second goal James Madison Basically, in that second half, and I would say because of the way we play, we made chance after chance after chance, from which we made bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. Three on threes, four on fours, chances to put Johnson in down the right to get across uh, in the front, uh, across the front, sorry, didn't happen. And then James Madison just almost gets too excited when I think it was Joe Linton had the ball, central midfield. And he half turns Madison out of the game. And then there is just this expanse of space in central midfield. And I guess you're suggesting Pape Matasar might have been there had he not been taken off because Kulisevsky was brought on for him at half time when we were losing. Mm -hmm. And then it's easy for him to slot a through ball into Murphy. And like I said, Dragosin is just a bit too deep. Let's go back to the first half, though. Um, it was... Uh, it was Spurs kind of were kind of on top, I think, in the beginning of... The, after the first kind of 10, 15 minutes, we were on top. But then... Uh, we conceded that goal and it was kind of out of nothing. A little cross from the left from Lloyd Kelly, Harvey Barnes on the half volley, really good finish. Mm. And Newcastle went 1-0 up there. Not much we could do about that. But Spurs got back into their game, played pretty well up until half time. And then it was 55 minutes when we got our goal. Madison's shot, Pope mistake. Brennan Johnson did well for that, didn't he? I thought he did, yeah. I thought with Brennan Johnson, he knows what he's good at. So he's not going to be deluded to think, oh, okay. Let me take a touch here with it. He just put it into that dangerous area. Keeper got a hand on it. And then, you know, um, the rest is history. Um, oh, sorry. The actual goal was uh, Madison, actually. was It was the save that was spilled, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. To the save it's, spilled yeah, my to bad. his left. And Brennan Johnson yes. on the slide. On the slide. Takes a first, uh, first time shot, which that, Pope then gets a hand on. That's right. To save. But then uh, Dan Byrne comes in. And yeah, that's it. That was it. That was it. that was it. And then between that, I'll, I'll just tell you what I've got written down here. Because between that... Uh, we then have, that was 55 minutes, and then on 60 minutes, mm. Newcastle and Eddie Howe did a very Mikel Arteta thing, where Nick Pope pretended to be injured, sat on the floor, and uh, Howe got his entire team around him and changed things. Yeah. And from there, Spurs continued to attack and make chances, but Newcastle slowly kind of got more into the game. And then eventually, unfortunately, there's this little period here. Johnson in on the right, tries to find Son, nearly an own goal. Madder's left foot top corner, saved by Pope. Poro from 23 yards, tipped over from Pope. Chance to Brennan Johnson on low volley, scooped over the bar from 15 yards. That's all between the 70th minute and the 75th minute. Before that, in the 69th minute, Odebert, chance from a turnover, should find Son, but shot blocked instead. I would argue that a lot of these situations that I've written down were opportunities where Spurs, if they were more clinical and better at making decisions, would have won this game. I think that's the frustration that from some fans um, that we've I mean to be fair like Odebert's going to need time because I think he was a part of it as well as Kulu some of our more senior players and Son him in um, there was times I thought you know play the right ball into the right um, Odebert had a shot if he thread that reverse ball even though that was a bit more difficult but if he did a reverse ball into Son Son would have been in there was times when someone had cut backs 
it wasn't quite finding him. Um, and it, it carried out throughout the whole game. It was times when we were two on three or three on three and we just did the wrong pass and we took a touch too many and they've crowded out the chance. And it looks like good defending on their part, but on our part, it looks like we're just not ruthless. Ruthless, like Roy Keane was saying, Roy Keane was saying, we just, we just don't have killers in those. And I remember under Conte and Mourinho, to be fair, when we had those chances, we, and Son. we just took them. Kane and Son. We took them. So how, obviously a lot of people in the comments, you know, very reactive saying Ange out or whatever. Mm -hmm. How do you answer people who are saying that when actually Spurs have made enough chances and half chances there to win the game comfortably? That's not about Postacoglu, is it? Is that is that what some other people are saying in that Spurs haven't um, spent enough or spent enough wisely in the transfer window to bring in a player mm -hmm. who will do better in those situations or is it that players who can so maybe if it's Solanke in there and Son out wide mm. maybe we would have scored more goals today yeah I mean it's it's all ifs mutts and babies at the moment because yeah. we don't know Solanke's got to come and show us that I think people are a bit worried because he's, he did it in one season and we're hoping that he translates that one season into this season um, I wouldn't have put all of my eggs in the Solanke basket um, me personally I would I would have liked to have, have uh, like two 30 million pound players instead of 160. No, no, no. I would have spent a bit more personally. I would have had like a Neto, for example. Not he's not obviously he, you could say he's injury prone, but I mean in terms of an experienced player with quality or even a, a wide forward yeah. that has more of a goal threat. I would have maybe spent a bit of money of that on, on the right as well as well as Odebert. I thought Odebert. I think the problem came from when Werner came around. But that, you know, that's a discussion for another time we're here to... When you say came around, what do you mean? Like on the, on so, the, so, the loan deal? Uh, yeah, so Werner came on a loan deal and he took up a space, in my opinion, in the squad. Mm -hmm. So I would have had Odebert take that space up yeah. that Werner took and yeah. then use another space. I felt like we do have un enough money to, to spend enough money to, you know, get a right wing forward in. Um, Maybe like um, I don't say we could we could break the bank, but you know Brentford striker and Bemo, mm -hmm. he's scoring goals for fun. I thought yeah. maybe if we showed a bit more ambition in the window, we could go for a player like that. That's just my opinion, though. I could be wrong. I don't know. So obviously going to the North London derby next, and based on what happened last season mm -hmm. when we played Newcastle and Arsenal, similarly near each other. Mm -hmm. Arteta will look at that and I think he'll try and play a pretty similar way, won't he? Be like, yeah. come and come and score against us. And if you don't, we'll we'll get you on the transition. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the plan. Because I, I said it before, is it a thing where Ange looks at the team and he adjusts according to the team? Mm. Or is it a thing is, no, nah, we need to do plan A better and we just need to execute our chances and then hopefully we get over the line. The problem is we're starting with the same front line more or less than we that that we had last season well hopefully Solanke will be there and well, we're hoping that Solanke is going to be clinical in those moments yeah and get us over the line I personally think Solanke will get us goals in terms of clinicalness I'm not too sure I think he might need one or two chances before he converts um if it's on the plate I expect him to finish but those harder chances he might not be able to you know he, convert like you know those hard angles that's just from what i've seen of him of course um so that's that's just a worry so i feel like we've built for the squad for the future yeah but in terms of now i'm looking at it like we're just a little bit off we're we just are. a little bit off and we're know? lacking the leaders required to get ourselves out of difficult situations like we got ourselves in today 100 i want to talk a little bit 100%. about raddy dragashin obviously he came in uh, because mickey van der ven wasn't fit I thought in general he had a really good game. Yep, I thought uh, so. He was just, and maybe this is just the reality of not having played a lot of games, but mm. he was a yard deep on that high line. Correct. And he was the one who kept Murphy Andrew on. Bro. But he looks like a player. He's a, he is a leader. I like him. Yeah, he did really well up until that point. I thought he had a good game. I thought he, let, he actually um, got up for a lot of headers, won challenges as well. Yep. On the ball, very good. Um, he wasn't nervous in possession, didn't hide at all. And even on set pieces on the corners, he was he made himself known. He was present. Um, had a little battle with Joel Linton, I saw there. And um, yeah, he wasn't phased at all. I thought he had a good game. But yeah, it's just those moments. That's what sport's about. Elite sport is yeah. about those finer details. Yeah. And so, <laughs> as they say in that film, um, it's all about the millimeters, the inches. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And yeah, that's what ultimately cost us the game. Um, Pape Massar started the game today. 
and um, he was brought off at half time to bring us another creator onto the pitch and we were much better in that second half I, I take your point certainly though could we have done with him potentially in that transition for the goal yeah. but I think we should maybe have been 2-1-3-1-4-1 one, one, one up at that point yeah. um, obviously Kulisevsky played inside when that happened Brennan Johnson went on the right yeah. but against Arsenal it's not realistic that he's going to play I mean it's after the international break so it's a long time away but mm. it's not realistic that he's going to play Kulisevsky and Madison in that game is he? No, so I doubt very bring much. Maybe he'll bring back in to play with Basuma do you think? Um, yeah, I mean I think Solanke will, will feature or start actually yeah, in that game. That's true. Um, so that's going to change the formation completely. So uh, will come out. Son will play on the left. Son will play on the left, yeah. Um, or the book could, you never know. Or the book could start on the right. You never know. Actually, but um, so so there is an option there, and then in the midfield, it could be the same Madison Basuma start, and then on the right, it, that's where the question marks are. Who do we go for on that right hand side? That's a debate for everyone to have in the comments. Before we leave you, I just want to ask you, Ash, how yeah. are you feeling about the Ange project, Spurs project as a whole? Are you yes. as negative as some of the people in the comments or is this just one of those things hard to go to St. James's Park, get a result? They did a number on us tactically. Or are you like, Ange needs to actually change his tactics in games like that and almost play like defensive versus defensive and see if we can nick the only goal of the game? No, I mean, I think the problem I had with it was in the window, I thought we needed to buy real killers in front of goal. Mm. Um, if you're going to play that way, you need to take your chances. And that's why I was disappointed in the window when we didn't really go out for quality. Who would I that mean, be? Like an ideal player? To, like Eze? That's who I wanted. For yeah, me. I think Eze was, was my number one. I was screaming for that on all channels every time people... Yeah. Were, well, I was saying like just then I said um, Embremo in terms of a goal oh, threat. Yeah. Yeah. I think him on the right is slightly different profile to what we have. Um, someone that runs in behind, someone that's able to be clinical in the final third, like he's good finishing. So yeah. you're not just relying on Son or Madison to bail you out or even Solanke. You've got another player that is a goal threat, which actually pushes their back line further back. Do you know what yeah, I mean? I do. Yeah. And so that it asks, all I want is our front line to ask questions. And then when those moments come and we do get a small chance, we put it away. Because I feel like when we're in that transition, we don't trust all of our players. It didn't look like they were trusting Brennan Johnson in the second half. There were two I'm being honest. to lay him in. And the weird I'm thing about honest. that is, it's in those positions where he does his best work, where it's just first, he, the ball's going to come to him first time across the front. Into Son, Son scores. Yeah. Different game. Anyway, guys, uh, that has been the match, instant match reaction to the Newcastle 2 Tottenham Hotspur 1 game. We will be back in about 15 minutes' time with a fan phone in show. Make sure you give us a call. The details, the link will be in the community tab. Disappointing game. I thought we played well, though. Trying to be half glass full about it, but obviously our first loss of the season and very disappointing. Make sure you subscribe to We Are Tottenham TV if you haven't already. And don't forget, come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs.